trying to talk to them, you know, families and maybe my own experiences and, you know, if that can help in a bit. What about your own experiences, your own upbringing? What can you draw on and learn from that and, and help children? Well, I had a great upbringing. I've got a very, you know, close family still have today. But, I mean, I think every family along the way has a few problems and I'm, I'm sure some of the problems that the kids have, that's something that I've probably all been through and, and maybe maybe because of, you know, a bit more, uh, you know, famous or play for Liverpool, maybe if they, they can listen to me a little bit more and, you know, they can take that home to them. What did you make of the reaction of the children here? Yeah, it was great. I mean, uh, you know, great set of kids. I mean, I really enjoyed my time in there and had a good laugh with them, you know, typical Liverpoolian kids, really. You know, I uh, always got a little wisecrack even at that age and, you know, it was just great to be involved with them. You mentioned the issue with the, the children. You mentioned your own upbringing. Have you had many experiences with your, your friends, both inside football and outside football, that the family break up? Yeah, I think that's just part of not just football, it's part of life. I think, you know, there's lots of people that's, you know, that just happens. I think in today a lot of probably managers do break up. That's, you know, the statistics that you hear. So that it is unfortunate, especially when kids are involved. But I think it's, you know, it's how you react from that. And, you know, I mean, uh, you don't want that to affect you for the rest of your life. You've got to obviously get on with it. And, you know, it is tough, but, you know, that's when the character shows, I think. You've spoken, of course, about the family of Liverpool Football Club. Just how would you sum up such a strong start to the season? Been a decent start, but I mean it's only it's only seven games, very early, seven or eight games in the season. We're doing okay in the Champions League, but you know, with Liverpool we should be doing well. Have you been surprised though it has gone this strongly in the, in the Premier League? No, not really. I mean, with Liverpool were a good side, we had a good run towards the end of last season, we were confident from that. We made a few signs in the summer as well, made us stronger. So, you know, we, we realise, you know, at the top now if you want to go, you know, fight for the premiership you've You've got to be winning, you know, most of the games because that's, you know, Chelsea, Man United, and Arsenal, even going away from home, they very rarely draw away from home until always wins. So you realise, you know, you've got to go for wins. Is there, at this time of the season, international week, is that a frustration, the fact that you've got to break it up for that? Yeah, it is, yeah, because I mean, we're on such a good run, you want you want to keep it going, but that, that, that's part of football, that's, you know, the same for the other side as well. Probably Chelsea and Man United are on good runs at the moment as well, they can say the same, but. I think we're used to that now over the years. It's, it's always been the way, and I'm sure as soon as we you know, get back to play Wigan in a couple of weeks, everyone will be ready for that. How realistic, Jamie, do you see this title challenge from the Liverpool this season? Well, I still think it's a, you know we, that's what we want to do. I think we've got the players capable, but you know time will tell. But I mean, I think it's too early to be talking about you know title talk now. Very early. I mean, uh, there's a lot of competition, and also I said we've only played seven or eight games, and maybe if you can look where we are, maybe January, February, that'd be a better uh, indication there. What about your defensive teammate, Martin Skirtle? He isn't required to have knee surgery. He will be back before Christmas at the club. So just how big a boost is that? Yeah, it is. He's been a you know, great sign the, the manager made in the last January. So, I mean, he's come in and done superb, you know, cemented his place in the team. Obviously, he's going to lose that now for a couple of months, but I'm sure he'll be, he'll be looking to get that back when he comes back. He's a top player. You know, he's proved that now. And I've said it, I was just delighted at the club that he you know, wasn't as bad as we, uh, we first thought. And, I said hopefully he can be back for the, you know, the Christmas because that's a very busy period. Just how much though will he be missed? Well, we'll see, we'll see, you know, you never know what the next game is going to bring, but you'll always miss good players and he's a good player. A lot of fans talking about Rafa Benitez. Pick up a lot of newspapers today say that Juventus might be interested. What are the players saying? Are they concerned that there hasn't been an offer yet of a new contract? Oh, I haven't seen that Juventus thing, you just sprung that on me. Uh, no, that's obviously up to the club that we're, you know, paid to play, you know, we've got a... Uh, you know, the manager's done great since he's been here. As I said, you know, I've got a great relationship with him. He's, he's helped my game enormously. But as I said, that's something that the players have not really to do with us. That's to do with the the board and Rafa. And as I said, you know, hopefully he can be sorted one way or the other. But how much do you think the key to Liverpool's success, continued success, is with Rafael Benitez in charge? Well, hopefully, but you, you never know what, what, what's in the future. I mean, he's, he's a top manager. He's proved that over the year. And I'm sure if he stays, that'll, that'll continue. But... You know, Liverpool Football Club will always, you know, will always go on, no matter who's in charge and whoever's playing. It's not just all on one person, but as I said, he's, you know, he's done a great job and you know, hopefully he will stay. You, you say if he stays, is there a doubt in your mind? Did, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. No, I don't think so. I think he's got two years left, hasn't he? And I'm, I'm sure they'll be looking at, as I said, if there's talk of it now, surely maybe it might be something uh, that may happen. But I mean, as I said, that's up to uh, the powers that be at the club. So it's not something that the players talk about that much? Not really, no. <laughs> Obviously, it is International Week. You mentioned England. There are a lot of debate about Steven Gerrard, the continued debate about whether he can play with Frank Lampard. What do you think? Yeah, I think they can play together. I mean, the two two world class players, top player. I mean, Lampard had a great start. Still with Stevie, and that's the thing about them. They're always, you know, one scores and then the other one scores in the game the same weekend. I mean, they're just well, two world class players, and I'm 
But that, that's not really down to Frank Lampard or Steven Gerrard. It's up to the manager to you know, find a way that they can both play, or maybe if only one of them plays, but that's, that's the manager's decision. How conscious is it of, of Steven? How his relationship works with Frank Lampard? Is it something he talks to you a lot about? No. We, uh, we only talk about Liverpool, really. I mean, I'm, I'm obviously not involved in international football now, and you know, my, uh, 100% of my conversations with Steven are Liverpool. What is it like for you now at the moment? Obviously, you did decide to, to leave England. What's it like in this international week when there's so much debate about the national team? Well, it, it's good. I enjoy it, actually. It gives me a chance to have a little bit of a blow, not just physically, mentally, really, from games. Just switch off a little bit and, you know, get a, good, a lot of good training. Because normally when you're playing games, you can't really train. There's that many games, so it's, it's a good couple of weeks to get some good training sessions in. And, you know, all I'm thinking about is, uh, you know, the Wigan game. It's the first chance we've had to speak to you, Jimmy, since the publication of your autobiography, when you did say in it that it meant more to, to play for Liverpool instead of England. How much do you stand by that, and how much do you? Well, it was it wasn't a, it wasn't a revelation in the book that that was uh, something I always said in the interview. So I, I, I didn't understand why people talk so much about it really, because I'd always said Liverpool was my main thing, and England was a bonus, and I've. I was always like that, not just as a player, I was a, as a child, as an Everton fan. Everton always come first for me, and you know, Liverpool have always come first as a player, and that's not to say I don't, I don't care about England, I do, it's just that I'm very, very passionate about me, me club that I play for now and the club I supported as a boy. You spoke about the image of players, you've spoken about the image of players, a lot's been made at the moment about the credit crunch, it affects so many people in life. Lord Treesman, the FA chairman, was debating about a wage cap for players just in football. What's your reaction to that? I hope he brings it in when I'm just finished. <laughs> no, I mean, I, th I think the most important thing is football clubs and, you know, part of the communities as well. And the most important thing is the football clubs are always there, you know. And uh, if bringing a wage cap in is going to stop, you know, teams going bust, I'm sure it's got to happen. Because, I mean, the most important thing is, is the football club and what it brings to the people in the community. Because at the end of the day, it's, you know, football is, you know, the, it's not just for the players, it's for the man on the streets and the supporters. And, the most important thing is, uh, is the football club, so if they can't afford them type of wages, it may be something that we may have to look at. Would you support it if it did happen? Well, if it was needed, yeah, if it, if it is needed to, to help, you know, the football clubs run properly and, you know, make sure teams aren't going, you know, out of business. As I said, the most important thing is no one's bigger than a football club. How oh, where are the players of the current credit crunch that everyone's talking about? What's that, sorry? How oh, where are the players? How much do you talk about it, obviously? Well, I think they are. I think everyone's aware of it. I think it probably affects everyone, but in different ways. Obviously, we're very lucky the situation that we're in, but I'm sure, you know, well, I, I do know it is probably, it's affecting all of us, but obviously some find a lot worse than others. And, you know, we, uh, as I said, we're very lucky that we're, we're in the situation, but, you know, I'm sure it does affect everyone at the moment. Thanks for time. Oh.